a two minute warning here at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office headquarters. We're waiting for Chief Tom Hadley to come out and talk to us, give us an update on the investigation. As we said, we have just entered day five on the search for Little Lawns Barton. Police, as you know, as we've been covering for the past few days, police have stand across the south side of Jacksonville. We've seen them around just the county. One, two, three. We've seen them at that initial apartment complex, Ravenwood, on Old Kings Road, in the nearby brush and the uh, retention pond, searching everywhere and anywhere for this little boy. We've also shown you video of them using bloodhounds, the air unit, and of course, we've, seen, we've also shown you different scenes around the, this particular area where this uh, crime was initially reported. One minute. Now, the, the laundromat nearby was searched. Surveillance video was, was looked at. Well, I'm right here. We just got the one minute uh, uh, notice that, that, that briefing will start in just another 60 seconds here at uh, JSO headquarters. Chief Tom Hackney will be handling the briefing like he has from day one. As you mentioned, what we know today is we're in day five. All the area of concentration is on Jacksonville South Side, retention ponds. This morning I was out there. Officers uh, from various jurisdictions going through neighborhoods along Greenland Road, just uh, no stone being left on turn. Now today we'll learn just what specifically has changed from yesterday as uh, Chief Hackney will momentarily address us and just talk about the developments in the uh, search for uh, Lonzi Barton. It uh, has a lot of community attention, a lot of people making donations, being very engaged in this search as the uh, Sheriff's Office is getting a lot of support from across the state in trying to find Chief what Tom is Hackney. now turning to a murder investigation. Now let's join Chief Tom Hackney for today's briefing. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for coming out for this noon briefing on day five of our investigation into the abduction and what we're learning now or feeling now is the murder investigation into 21-month-old Lonzi Barton. Uh, before I go into some details of, about this, you know, part of what we uh, did yesterday during some search efforts, we recovered a, a body yesterday. Um, today, our search efforts have done the same thing, an unrelated what we think, and we're still looking into this because it's still very fresh, a 2003 missing person case. We recovered a car and a body of water near uh, Bowden in 95. Again, that's still very fresh, but when, when I said yesterday, when you look, you find yesterday we found a body, today we found a car, and in that body we, we do believe to be some skeletonized remains, but again, not related to the, uh, to the murder or missing persons case we're working here. Kind of recover this again. You know, this started uh, Friday morning at about 2.20 in the morning as a report of an auto theft and abduction. That, uh, that began search efforts in and around the Briarwood neighborhood where the, uh, where the case was originally reported. Worked from a window of time from Thursday night at 8 p.m. to 2.20 Friday morning when the, when the report was called in through 911. Our efforts now have, uh, have turned, again, like I had alluded to before, this is, this is less of a missing persons investigation, more of a homicide investigation. Uh, days have slipped by, 21 month old is out on his own somewhere. That is, uh, that is a turn of events that's, that's bad, and it begins to uh, keep going the same. The list of state and federal agencies that are helping us, it really, it, it is so impressive. And these are, some of these are requests that we've made. Others are, are, are eight police agencies and law enforcement partners who have showed up to help us. And they include, I mentioned this yesterday, the Clay County Sheriff's Office, St. John's County Sheriff's Office, Nassau, Baker Counties, Orange Park Police, Neptune Beach Police, Jack's Beach Police, uh, Florida East Coast Railway, Florida Fish and Wildlife, got the uh, Jack's Fire and Rescue, Urban Search and Rescue, the Miami-Dade Police Department, uh, Miramar Police Department, all these from down in South Florida, getting help from, uh, from state partners there, uh, all the way out from Texas, the EquiSearch people, and our state and federal partners include the, the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. We have FBI agents, FBI agents that work from their CAST team, which is their cellular analysis survey team. They're very uh, crucial in this uh, investigation, what we're doing. Have help from the U.S. Marshal Service, the Department of Highway and Security. All of these partners are helping us do what we can, not only to find missing Lonzi, but to build the case against his caretaker, 32-year-old Reuben Ebron. Uh, Mr. Ebron's original story that regarded the uh, auto theft abduction, we know that not to be true. Our facts and evidence that we have in our back pocket prove that not to be the case. That turned this from a stranger abduction and changed the focus 
that he made us go. He gave us a lie, gave us a case that pointed police in the wrong direction away from him. This, again, the keystone to our investigation is Reuben Ebron stepping up and telling the location where he put that child. He had that child, now he doesn't. He needs to step up and tell us. Again, I, I sound like a broken record saying that, but that is what will change this investigation. Uh, you know, it's, it's evident to investigators that, that Ruben thinks he's smart. Uh, my money and my bets go against the team of investigators, local, state, and federal, that have been put together to investigate this case. My money goes on them and against Ruben and how smart he thinks he might be. Uh, you know, we've had approximately 220 tips so far come in from, uh, from the public. Again, their, their sightings, their information, their suggestions, their, their business partners here in Jacksonville along the route that we've kind of identified, that south, uh, south side area, Phillips and I-95, suggesting, hey, come take a look at our video from, from our store. Those kind of things have led us to these places that we're searching. I said before, this is an intelligence-driven investigation, and our searches that we're doing in these wooded areas, in the lakes, and in some of the trash receptacles along this route, it's all intelligence driven. Nothing is happening with this just by happenstance. We're not drawing locations out of a hat. The places that you, the media, are seeing, officers, detectives, canines, dive team searching, they're there for a reason, and they're there with a specific mission in mind. Uh, citizen support is, is just crazy. It's, uh, it's the involvement that we've had has been so overwhelming um, as, as the, the face of this and having to speak to the media daily, when I see the citizens who come to our command post, the citizens that I encounter, which haven't been very often on the street because I've tied up with this, the level of support that the men and women who are out searching for Lonzi have received is just, it, it's, it, it's so touching. It, it, it really does. It, 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 it just lets you know the support that, that this child has and that we have when we're looking for him. People ask me, what can they do? Uh, you know, there's a number that's been provided to the PIO that, that we've asked for, for some things, but, um, and this is, I don't know if it's unusual or not, but th what I personally do and what people can do to help is pray. You know, I mentioned Sunday, it was Sunday, go to church and pray. Uh, hey, it's Tuesday, pray some more. I will be more than happy to take some divine, uh, divine influence with the locating of this child um, and if it offends you that I ask you to pray, then, then don't. But if that's the kind of person you are, do it. That can help us with it. Uh, the number that's been provided, there's some other means that you can, you can do to, to help with that too. Um, the businesses have stepped up to help us, kind of alluded to that before. Uh, Pizza Hut, Walmart, Zaxby's, Sam's Clubs, Firehouse Subs, European Street. We had Pepsi and Coke both, uh, both donate products and numerous citizens of well have come in. Our efforts will continue our locations will continue to be searched as long as there's intelligence that we have that leads through it. This is a very systematic, this, the, the locations that we're looking have been gridded out. Um, the incident command structure uh, that we've spoken about before that, that's put together helps keep that in track. You have 200 plus searchers with, with just a ton of locations to search. It is a, a, a true body of work to keep up with that. But those efforts will continue, like I said before, until we have nowhere else to go and no puddle to get in, no tree to get under, and no rock to overturn until we do everything we can to locate Lonzi. Um, as this goes on, the, the information will be provided to you as things happen. If anything breaks in this case, there'll certainly be uh, the news to the first note, and I can take some questions. Chief, I think, uh, from a runaway action news, uh, we understand that uh, there's some activity around landfills, and so which ones can Okay, the, the issues with the landfills, we identified and started searching Friday morning dumpsters in the area, dumpsters and trash cans and trash receptacles in the immediate area where the call was reported. As we determined what the route was uh, throughout that night, those, again, intelligence led, we went to the places that we felt like could have been important to the case. Yesterday, we actually came across a compactor type dumpster. Uh, that compactor type dumpster is obviously not a safe thing to, to search. Uh, I just didn't feel safe authorizing uh, detectives or searchers to go in a compactor dumpster. We had that compactor dumpster removed to the landfill, stretched that out, searched through it, didn't find anything. So it's not a landfill-centered search. It was 
just the location that was safe to do it. Have you suspended any trash pickups in the area? In order to facilitate some of the searching that we're doing, we did some of the dumpster pickups uh, throughout that area. We did ask the businesses uh, to suspend those. The, the support with that has been, has been overwhelming as well. Part of what we do through that systematic gridded search is doing just that. We have dump, uh, dumpster teams that have gone through, searched it, and we'll move on from just that. Just in that area of the city, just in the southern part of the city, the dumpster? Oh, Dan, I wouldn't even throw it to that large area. We're, we're hitting these specific areas that we think are related. And again, I said yesterday, there's a lot of things that investigators that I know that I, I can't share and won't, really won't share, but know that the dumpsters and the areas that we're searching, they're intentional and we know why we're doing that. So. Do you see any change from, a, from an abduction investigation to a murder investigation? How has that affected the, the morale of the folks who are working on it? At the beginning, you're enthused to find a child alive. Now you're not. How are your officers handling that? How does what that do to them? It, uh, yeah, I've, I've, some a couple people have asked me why I use the pronoun I as I've spoken to this. I, I use the I as I, I talk about this case because I care. I'm all in. I, I'm, I'm all in. Every bit of brain power that I have is putting forward to this. And I can tell you, each and every one of these officers, the detectives and searchers that I've spoken to, the canine officers, have that same I mentality. I'm doing everything I can to find that child. And so we've moved less to finding that child alive, but just to finding that child, taking that baby in whatever form he is and putting him back in his mother's arm is the motivating driving factor that every one of these folks that are out here doing this is doing, that are brave in the heat and brave in the rain. That's why they're doing it. And they're what focused. I mean, it must, it must be wear on you know, five days in steadily looking and not having great results. It, it's, it's wearing, and like I've alluded to before, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I know the answers, or at least I know where to get the answers from. And all these folks have that same thought and, and question of me. Well, if he knows, why doesn't he tell? Honestly, I've got those very same answers. If he knows, why doesn't he tell? I said it before, speaking to his family members, if you talk to him, tug on those heartstrings. He's got the answer. He can stop this. He can solve this. He can, despite what he may face, he can make this stop right now and put that child back where that child belongs. When was the last time Uh, we spoke with them, I believe, the day before yesterday. Days kind of run a little bit together. Uh, again, I told you, I think he, he thinks he's smart. And uh, there is a little bit of uh, efforts that, that get made to, um, I don't know, mislead investigators or, or that. It's, it's just not fruitful. I, I don't want to talk about anything else with, with Reuben or have my investigators talk about anything else with Reuben except where's the baby? Show me the body, show me the baby, and we can move on. And I don't... It, it's just wasted effort with some of the other things that he's done. Uh, and you guys mentioned uh, having family members come in and try to convince him. Have you guys tried bringing in Lana Larimore to try and, and talk to him at all? I don't want to, again, I, I, sounding like broken records when I say these things, our, our investigative efforts and, and tactics that we use to do that, um, it, it, it jeopardizes or could jeopardize the case that we're building against him now to discuss how I'm doing things and why we're doing things, and, and it is just, it's not fruitful. I said this before, please know that if there's a way legally that we can do what we need to do to solve this case and find this child, you can bet your bippy we're doing it. Yeah, because he said he had the child. Uh, he's, he, he's the one that, that had the child. If there was somebody else who may have had the child, I'd certainly look at them, but he's the guy that had him. Uh, you're the guy that has him, you're who we're going to look at. And if there's some other way to look, we would. But um, you, you can't tell us lies and, and expect us to believe you later. Chief, only so much territory down there. How far are you along? We're progressing well, Roger, through through the areas that we have to look and what we need to do. We're, I won't say we're getting close, but we're getting a whole lot closer to, to being, I said this and it was a bit confusing the way I said it, I know where he's not. 
I know the certain lakes and wooded areas that he's not in because we've searched those. So that, that narrows our focus down. The gridded area, we can check that gridded section off the list. And as we go through those, until more intelligence comes that we have somewhere else to look, I'm not there yet, but we're getting towards that. What piece of information from the public would be most helpful? I guess maybe the sighting of his car in that area, or is there something that you say, wow, this would really help us outside of getting information from the car? Uh, that's, that's kind of the, the, the hard part is, uh, and I asked this yesterday, you know, we've got such a tight little window from 8 p.m. Thursday to 2.20 a.m. Friday. It's a very distinctive car. Um, the businesses have been helpful, like I said, you know, asking us, hey, come look at our video, see if it's relative to it. We have a, a route that we think is down either 95 or Phillips Highway or somewhere down there south, but investigators have done that themselves. Uh, if, if there is somebody who, who happened to be out at that time of night that maybe saw that car, uh, we have an idea. Again, the FBI has been great with the information that they've been able to provide us, that, that CAST team and taking that cell phone data and using their federal resources. It's, um, these are smartphones and they are smart for a reason. They have a lot of information on them. Um, so we, we kind of get an idea of, of where he is and where he's been, but there's things that, that maybe haven't, haven't come up. So if during that window, and again, I, I hate to say it, I, I don't, I'm not interested from before, but that period of time, if you saw that orange Honda with that black hood, with him driving it, hey, I'd like to hear from you. When he first goes in, how big is that gap in your timeline from eight to two? You're not sure where he was. Is it two hours, one hour, 30 minutes? It's a couple hours of, of time that I would better like to account for than I've been able to. So today, will those search efforts continue in that south side area of 295 Phillips Highway? Do you plan on expanding anywhere outside of there? We're, we're going through that methodical list of, of, of those graded locations in that Southside Phillips Highway area. As that continues, we're, we're working towards a conclusion in that particular area. May change focus a little bit as, as some other information, like I said, from these, the, the federal assets that we have that develop that, that can refocus our efforts and, and start that. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll be down there. We understand that uh, the, the, the young fellow here is, is related to Haley Cummings. What do you know about that? Does that play any part? Is there any It seems like a sad, unfortunate coincidence. Um, I, it doesn't solve this case here. But you know it is a race. There is a problem. Again, I, I've seen the same thing that I believe a lot of folks have in, in the media, that, that there's some relationship. I've not had that direct contact with the family personally to, to say, yes, it is. So I hate to confirm things I don't know. Can you describe the nature of the tips a little more detail that you get? Some of them are, are, they come with a picture attached that see a little blonde haired boy around that same time frame. That's gotta be him. Mom's been pretty helpful with, with pointing those photos out and, and looking to say, nope, that's not him. Uh, that sort of thing. There've been a lot of suggestions, a lot, a lot of, uh, of folks seeing some things and, and kind of asking through some of those tips. It, it's not a, the greatest use of the tips, but it's citizen involvement nevertheless. Uh, you know, asking, have we done this? Have we done that? Maybe we should look there. Maybe we should look here. Uh, open to suggestions to, to the point. Uh, I don't like the idea of, of changing the focus of what investigators are doing, but hey, um, anything to solve this case, bring it on. And Lana's been helping you. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. She has been absolutely. Chief, since you touched on it in Term 4, um, how big was the initial search grid and how much of it had you covered? It had a couple of different initial search grids, one around the, the location where, where they lived in Briarwood and another one that, that was developed as, as our information started coming in on the south side. Uh, it, it's a fairly larger area down there in the south area, a little bit smaller area, more focused, kind of dealing with some wooded railroad track areas, a couple gridded areas up there. We've worked through those and, and this is knocking on every door that we can find. If there's an abandoned structure, we, we work to find who owns it. Hey, bring us a key. We want to look in there. We want to look underneath. There's sheds in the back. We'll look in there. If there's a little wooded area around somebody's house, we've been through it. Uh, Ticks, Ticks seems to be these guys uh, out there searching's best friend because they're uh, they're hanging on, and they, you know. But it doesn't matter. It, the the end of the day, the bottom of the line, whatever it takes. If it's ticks or rain or snakes, we'll trudge through it. Chief, can you share a little bit of more insight between uh, about that transition from abduction missing person case to now murder investigation? Is it uh, just the sheer number of days that have gone by with all these still being missing, or what else sort of led you guys in that direction? Hmm. Yes, 
It's it's a little bit of everything. It's it's some of the time that's gone by that that's gone on. It, it, obviously, your 21 month old isn't isn't to, you know toddling around out there. And we feel like if somebody initially would have had him, if if uh, Ruben would have taken him and given him to somebody else, that those things, if they happen, they they typically kind of resolve themselves fairly quickly. 21 month old for five days in a hundred and something degree heat and rain, again. There's just not a good outcome. And the, the you ask about how does that change from a missing person or a abduction to, to a murder, our efforts are still there to find him. And as we find him, we're building a case. And the case for whatever it is, is what this is in the outcome. I know you couldn't give any details on Lonnie's mother visiting Ebron, mm -hmm. but can you discuss if there have been any other visitors trying to help you out? And like you mentioned, how get those heartstrings and try and get information yeah, there was a, a an effort for a, a media interview yesterday that um that at, at his request and that got set up and uh, then that got canceled as well again thinks he's a pretty smart guy we have the car we've searched and processed the car we have some results back and are still waiting for some others to come back but the car has a black box I don't know the specific answer to your question, but typically those black boxes are, are dealing with um, with events that deal with crashes, and, and it'll record a, a period of time before the initial event or the event that, that causes that black box to record it. So it's a car is just driving. Um, it's a it's a little no value, but hey, it's another road we can go down. He made a request uh, for, it, it probably through his family, and I'm not 100 percent sure of that. For for a request to be interviewed by the media, that was arranged by our policy, which is something that can be done. Uh, we facilitated that happening, and his choice at the last minute was to uh, was to not do it, and be that through his own volition or he and his attorney's volition. Um, again, he's got constitutional rights just like we all have, and he has that right to. Um, to yeah, he asked. He asked for a specific reporter with a specific outlet, um, and that's what we did to, to accommodate him. Can you, tell me, can you tell me the time frame between from when he said he wanted to do that interview and then when he canceled? How long did it take him for him to say that he had changed his mind? It, it was it was within within a few hours, but you know those those kind of details um, may be interesting. But that kind of thing doesn't lead me to, to finding a body. Chief, now that we, he knows obviously that he's a suspect in this case, how confident are you that he's going to give the answers he wants, knowing that he's a prime suspect here? You know, he, he, he from what we, we saw with his father's interview, he tells his father a certain story. That certain story isn't exactly the same that he tells us. And, and uh, again, uh, my money goes on the investigators and what we're going to find. Um, he doesn't seem like he has the wherewithal to, to do what's right, no matter who asks him or, or what it is. Um, so uh, my, faith, my faith in him, it, it's not there. How much of the coverage of, of this case has he been able to see? I doubt very little. I mean, we don't There's have no televisions coverage. in the jail. He's, he has been in police custody, um, either voluntarily at first or until he was, uh, was charged since his initial report. Don't know of any time he's got to read a paper or watch TV. Chief, At this point in time, he's the only one. He's the, he's the man with the answers. He's the man that had the the baby, and he's the man that needs to give me the answers. Could you tell us a little, a little bit more about the timeline? We know that that, that Kangaroo gas station caught him around 1233, and then uh, the laundromat, you know, that he had gone there the night before. But any any other gas that he's been able to fill? Yeah, okay, I can discuss that because it's, it's not relative. He, he made an attempt within a two-minute time frame from the actual uh, 911 call that he had. It was a failed attempt at 911 at, I believe, 2.17 in the morning. Uh, went back and initiated the call that went through at 2.19 in the morning. So you've got, you've got that two-minute time frame. His story is that, that his cell phone well, was out of battery. When we found it, it was uh, – Powered down, didn't have a battery charge to it, and he went uh, back to use a different cell phone. So. Chief, 
All right, thank you all for your, your continued support. And uh, as things happen, we'll come back with you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.